Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you? Um, don't think I read for you before, so I like to start out with a little spiel. I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. So I try to describe the picture the best I can. They never waste a message. There's always a reason for whatever they say or show. So if you, if it doesn't make any sense now, you'll either remember it later, see it later, or somebody else will validate it for you later and go, oh, I know what he's talking about. Um, good grief, I forgot my little speech. <laughs> Excuse me, I've been a little sick. Um, this is not an exact science, so sometimes you got to pull it outside the box a little bit. We communicate the best way we can. They don't always tell you what you need to know or want to know. They tell you what you need to know. It's their ball game. I let them run the show within reason. So uh, <laughs> we're going to talk to Tony and. Uh, He comes in playing a drum, kind of like the marching band type of drum because he's walking and it's, he's got the strap on it and he's playing a drum. So I don't know if he played a drum in high school or he liked to play drums. So he's talking about a rim shot. He's talking about a rim shot. I don't know if you know what a rim shot is where you get the drumstick on the rim of the drum instead of on the, on the head. Still, he's still playing. He's still playing. And it's not marching music. It's uh, more like he's playing in a band. So I don't know if he used to, uh, maybe he used uh, his fingers to play air drums a lot, you know, or drummed them on the table. You'll hear this. I don't know if it'll sound like the fingers drumming on the table, like drumsticks, or if you're actually going to hear that rim shot, or you're going to hear drums playing. So know this is a huge... This is going to be a huge sign for you. And you can be walking through a store. You can be in your vehicle outside. doesn't matter where you hear it. In a restaurant, you could hear somebody doing this on the table next to you, you know, drumming their fingers. He's, he's just talking about, give me the beat boy, free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Who sang that song? Ah. Okay, he's singing what's what's called Drift Away by Dobie Gray, so it's back. Give me the beat, boy, free my soul. I want to get lost in the rock and roll and drift away. So anyway, he's singing that song. I don't know if he's exactly singing it to you, but I think it's more about himself. It, free my soul. It's about free my soul. So, Okay. You had asked how he feels about you remarrying. That's where this comes in. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to free his soul, but yet you don't have to free his soul. I don't know. How do I explain this? Um, don't feel like you have to hold on to him and stay there forever. He wants you to go ahead and live your life and be happy. Free, free his soul is not, is not letting go of him, forgetting him. Um, I hope I'm not bungling this. Help me, man. Help me, Tony. Help me. It's a, you need to let go of his soul a little bit, if that makes sense. It's not like. It's not like you didn't love him. It's not like you don't love him. It's, oh, geez, Rhonda, you're muttering. He wants you to go ahead and do this. He wants you to go ahead. But that doesn't mean you just totally shut him out, shut the door on him. He never existed. You didn't love him. It's, oh, gosh, I hope I'm not, mutter, I'm not bungling this. I hope you understand what he means. So that's where he's talking about free his soul. Because he's... Okay. 
he still loves you. He's very proud of you as a mom. He says sometimes they can be very ornery. He kind of said it like that. But that's just kids. He, he says you're feeling guilty about being happy with somebody else. That you're feeling guilty about letting him go. Even though you really, really not letting him go. He's just, he, you just have a different relationship with him now. If that makes better sense. He wants you to make a life for yourself and the kids. He wants you to be happy. Believe me, they don't they don't hold on to that stuff. Once we leave, we don't hold on to all that earthly stuff. And once we leave, they actually kind of peel us like an onion and they take all this heavy earth grudges and anger and bitterness and they peel all of that off of us and cleanse us. And we're not like that once we get on the other side. He says he has nothing but absolute pure love for you. And this type of, say it again, this type of love doesn't hold on and smother. Keep going. It's about loving and being happy for you as a soul and a person experiencing this crap here. He's calling it crap. <laughs> Not that he hated his life here, but it is heavy. It's heavy down here. It's heavy, especially right now. He wants you to move forward. Absolutely. 100%. And he's happy about it because we don't sit up there and go, oh, gee, I lost. He doesn't feel like he lost. He, he so, uh, say it again. I can't quite hear you. He feels like he won the grand prize when he had you. That this is the way things are supposed to be. And he feels very comfy with your next decision, whoever that's going to be. But he wants you to feel at peace about it and not feel guilty about it because he says he's still going to be right there with you. Tell everybody. I promise you a thousand percent. He can hear you. He can see you. Talk to him. He'll show you in some way. He'll give you some kind of a sign that'll let you know that he's giving you a thumbs up. He's... I don't know. Do you have a boy and a girl? The little boy, he's tossing his hair, you know, like you would a little bitty kid, you know, ruffle their hair up on top of their head. He's tossing his hair, and the boy looks up at him. Small children and animals can see them and hear them and interact with them. They don't think anything about it until the kids get to be around nine or ten, and then they look around and go, People are going to think I'm crazy if I tell them I can see my dad or my imaginary friend or whatever. So then they kind of shut it down. And we're getting more and more where, the, where kids are not shutting it down. So the next generation, they ought to be pretty open to it. So we'll see how much older it will last their whole lifetime instead of shutting it down. So this boy is 
interacting with him. This boy knows that he's there. This boy, if you listen to him when he's playing by himself, he's not playing by himself all the time. Sometimes he's playing with Tony. Tony's showing himself kind of squatted down and the little boy's sitting on the floor. It looks like in his bedroom by himself because it's usually when they're by themselves and they're they're not distracted by other stuff. And they're actually exchanging toys and they're talking to each other. And the boys, this young boy is like, no big deal. No big deal that he sees him and talks to him. It's nobody's told him yet that he can't do this. Once people start telling him that he can't do it, then he may not see him so much. But he is doing it. He can do it. So if you pay attention to when he's playing, like in another room probably when it's quiet, you might pay attention to what he's saying. Or if you've seen him hold a cookie out to the air. I don't know how old he is now. Hold a cookie out to the air like he's feeding somebody that's not there. <clears throat> there was somebody there. Oh, he says he doesn't want to scare you or creep you out. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been a little sick the last few days. <clears throat> Tony doesn't want to freak you out or scare you, so that's why he, I don't think he's done a whole lot around you because he thought it would scare you. Let's talk about, oh, he just went flitting back and forth real fast. So if you ever see, usually if you do see them, usually it's in your peripheral vision. And even when I see them in my peripheral vision and I turn and look, they're gone, even though I can see them head on. But this was like seeing it. I don't know if you call it what kind of vision you call this, not peripheral. Maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, it's like I saw him. It's just like seeing him out of the corner of your eye. Only it was up here. And it's like ran across, ran across, ran across. So you've seen him like walking and then you lift your head up. And you see nothing. So you just think it's your imagination. But it's not. There's a strong essence of his cologne. Or some, some could be a hair product. But I feel more like it's his cologne. That you've gotten a whiff of. And you can be in the store. Outside. In your house. Car. Doesn't matter. Whenever you get this. Validate him, acknowledge him, tell him you love him. Invite him in if you want him in. Give them permission to show up. A lot of times I see that they show themselves that they've been standing in a corner of somebody's house. Now that sounds a little creepy. But it's just indicating that they stand back because they're afraid to come forward because they don't want to scare somebody. They don't want to make somebody think that their house is haunted or... There's a boogeyman breaking in their house in the middle of the night. So it always helps to give them permission. If you want, it's up to you. And asking for signs. And he says, and don't doubt, doubt the signs because you've already seen some. He's not saying yet. Maybe he will. Don't doubt them, just accept them as a sign. Okay, the other one, I feel like it's a girl, don't know for sure. It's like he has sat down, he has actually sat down and colored with this child, with coloring books. Actually, they each had coloring books. He was coloring, she was coloring. Both of these children have interacted with him. I don't, I don't know that you could ask them because then that's kind of leading it on and put, putting ideas in their head. It's better if it comes from them. I don't know how old they are. I don't creep anybody's Facebook page before I do a reading because it messes up what little logical mind I have. But they have both had a strong connection with him since he passed.
and this one waves at him sometimes. So if, if you think back and you've seen them, when, at least when they were younger, like I said, I don't know how old they are, and you've seen this one waving at the air, was not waving at the air. They are perfectly at peace knowing that he's there. And they will be till they get older. If if people shun them, not shun them, but shut them down, um, you know, give them the look like, yeah, right. So you might want to just listen to what they're saying or kind of keep an eye on what they're doing and see if, if you pick up on that. It's better not to lead them. Sometimes they'll just tell you what they think you want to hear. <laughs> he says, he knows that mowing the grass is a chore and he wishes he was there to do it for you. That he loved taking care of you. He loved being a family. He loved his babies. And he's saying love because he's talking about when he was here. That hasn't stopped. The kids know. The kids know that he still loves them. He says they feel like maybe they shouldn't talk about him as much or talk about what they have seen or know. See, look how old I am and I get all the crazy looks like, really, you can't see dead people. Yeah, I can. So you can only imagine what it is for smaller, smaller tykes. moving. Okay, he's right here. I need to get a better camera because we use cameras doing paranormal, paranormal stuff and we can actually pick up some faces sometimes and stuff. But it seems like nobody can pick it up on this shitty camera I have on my computer. He's leaning down and I can feel the pressure on my shoulder like and it just feels like a bubble pushing on me, kind of, sort of. I can feel that the, the air feels heavier, and it feels like heavy, heavy air pushing just on the back of my shoulder. So you could feel a warmth, a coolness, or not usually a coolness, a warmth, a tingling. You could feel like a hair you can't get off, um, the, the kind of heavier bubble like pushing on the back of the shoulder. He's trying to nudge you and let let you know he's still there to help. So again, make sure you validate him, acknowledge him, tell him you love him. He said he's there for your shoulder to lean on more than you know. They can honestly do more stuff than you know. They can nudge people to call you. They can bring that perfect guy to you. <clears throat> they can uh, put that perfect job opportunity in front of you, but they cannot override our free will choice. And <laughs> my guys are yapping again. Every time I tell this story, they yap. They bring me perfect things and I go, no, I don't want it. And they go, Rhonda, why are you doing that? We just, we just brought you this. So look for those new things that pop in out of the blue. Ask him, what was he good at helping with? Ask him, you want help, help to move forward in your life? He's still going to be there. As long as you allow him. But he cannot override your free will choice. So ask him to help open some doors for you. He'll help bring the perfect guy to you. Ask him. And then you have to allow it.
He can hear you. He can see you. Talk to him. He's there to be more of a guide now, because that's where he. This is the way it's supposed to work. Don't ask me why. I don't know. It's about our soul learning. So it goes a little way deeper. Okay, he shows you sitting on the side of the bed. You pick up a picture of him that must be on the nightstand. And the only thing I hear is why, 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 why. He says, this is for your soul's growth. The lessons that you learn the most from are the ones that hurt the most. The ones that get your, your attention. And the way they get your attention is by hurting like hell. He wants you to look for the silver lining in it. What did you learn from our relationship? What did you learn from our death? From our death. My death. And look how strong you became. You didn't think you could do it. He says you still have some clouds and cobwebs to clear out. He's he's right there beside you, so ask him to help you. He's more than willing. So as he's shown it's a picture of you sitting on the side of the bed looking at his picture asking why. He's sitting on your right side. So you may not remember it. Maybe you did feel something. You could have felt the bed press down a little bit. Everybody feels energy different. So I don't know how you will feel it. But you could have felt like somebody actually sitting next to you. You could have felt a warmth on that side of the body. You could have felt that bubble pushing clip on that side of the body. You could have felt an extreme sense of peace, which is what he's trying to bring you. And you should have felt your hair being ruffled like this. And usually it's a very slight, it's usually not a lot. School. He's talking about school. He's talking about the kids in school. Kids and school. It's going to be hard. Everything's a struggle. Don't isolate them. Even he doesn't know which way this is going to go. He said there's so many, so many deciding factors in all this. He doesn't even know. But he's worried about the kids in school, not them going to school, about them not being in school. Well, at least him in the spirit world <clears throat> doesn't even know what the future is for this. Oh, man, thanks a lot. There's too many... What's he saying? There's too many cards that have to fall. And they have to fall in the right way. Before it's going to be cleared up. Know that they are safe. Know that they are loved. Know that I have grandma with me. Grandma pops in too. 
don't know if he's talking about your grandma, his grandma. He's not saying anything. Okay, he's talking about <clears throat> he's talking about dancing. I don't know if you're wanting to take dance lessons. He also mentions yoga, separate, but dancing, dancing. I don't know if you're missing dancing. You want to take dance lessons. You want to go dancing. He's not saying why he's bringing that up. I love you. I loved every inch of you, every part of you. He's trying to ask him something, but he's not answering it. And they're not going to answer every single question. Uh, some of it is stuff that we just have to figure out on our own. And that's dang. So he, he pulled my eyes over. I have some Oracle decks sitting over here, and he pulled my eyes to this card. I happen to be sitting there. I choose to learn through love. What did you learn? What did you learn by loving him? What did you learn by his love to you? What did look, actually look at it as a lesson of some kind? What did you actually learn? What's what's the silver lining in it? You learn to love deeper, to um, don't say regretful words because you don't know when the last time you'll see somebody is. Um, pull your family closer. Do you learn unconditional love that maybe you didn't have before? I mean, what what is the silver lining? He wants you to learn through the love of your relationship, not the loss of it, the love of it. But everybody, all these everybody's all the readings I'm doing today, everybody's preaching. <laughs> I love you very deeply. Still do. The love does not die. I think I said it in this reading, they peel us like an onion and they take all that anger and greed and all the heavy crap that goes along with our body stays here with the body. Well, they, we get rid of it as soon as we get up there. The only thing that truly remains is the love. Love never dies. It's a high form of energy. It can't die. Energy, quantum physics, you can change it, but you can't kill it. my dear he's going to leave i don't know if he gave a lot of validations so hopefully you know that that was him he's skipping he's skipping skipping away skipping blowing you kisses he's not really worried about giving the babies messages because they're already getting them they've already got this Okay, my dear, he's leaving. Much love to you. Uh, see you later. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. Much love to you.